Pretty sure that the next game. Ah, yeah. Do not put your helmet behind mud when you try and take it out. Go! Hold on, let's go! Oh, here we go! <laughs> we, pop, we pop a little bit of a wheelie. Oh, we're just gonna do like 800. This thing is soft. This, this thing is like really soft. Starbucks. Oh, there's. You hear that? Yo guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to yet another exciting video. In today's video, it is the first of our new series. I'm going to call the series Fried Rice Motorcycles because most of them partially, fully or like small parts come from China. It comes from China. And no, this is of course not looking at the front. It is not a Ducati. It is not a Multistrada. Bruh. It is actually... Yoink, a Moto Marini 649, a six and a half Moto Marini Xcape. And in today's video, of course, I'm going to talk to you guys all about it. And I also need to go to the store because my own KTM 1290. Yeah, you have seen that video before. Anyway, so we're going to be taking the Xcape 650 out for a ride. We're going to take it to the shop. We're going to do some off-roading with it. Might hit some highway here and there. And I'm going to talk to you guys about the engine, about the frame, about anything. But that's for on the motorcycle. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. On a normal occasion, we're already on the road, but I want to show you guys a cold start of the Moto Marini Xcape. Look at that, we have backlights in the controllers. Everybody on the BMW just was like, why the hell didn't they make that? Well, Moto Marini actually did. And this 7-inch display is like the cleanest I have ever seen. This thing is like really neato, look at that. It's like really, really shiny, also really big. They also told me that the software was a little bit to upgrade it, that you could mirror your phone and you could actually watch Netflix on the screen while actually riding. Yeah, and with the next software update coming soon, you can have like a very big ass full size GPS on that screen as well. That is nice. Anyway, let's get going. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, by the way, normally the press lead bikes I always ride are like brand spanking new. This one is not because I want to test the durability. You know, the fried rice made in China, partially made in China, designed and partially built in Italy, partially built in China. This one has 11,470 kilometers. So it's not brand new anymore. Perfect. Horn, everything works. Gotta check that out. Four indicators, throttle works, clutch works. This is also a cable, the gas is all cable. So it might be a little, little bit of loop down there and we'll be good to go. Anyway, did I already say this bike was 7,800 euros? No. Anyway, it's going to be even cheaper. I will tell you when we get there. Let's go. Now, the first thing I always try on new motorcycles is a little bit of the, the, the slow turning. Like, how can you, how does it feel when you turn like really slowly? Is it like pretty stable? Oh, we got a lot of wheel spin going on here. Oh, the horsepower. Yeah, this thing got a, a 60 crazy horses, 60 horsepower and uh, 54 newton meters of torque. Uh, the engine is also, uh, the turn went actually pretty well. Uh, and like I said, this thing has 11,478 kilometers. So it has, it is a press fleet motorcycle. So it ha has seen a lot of wear and tear and probably not as mud, much mud as I would be taking it to. But you get a little bit more of the feeling how it feels when you've been riding it for like a year or two years or maybe three years if you're not on a bike that much. But I do have to say first impressions, yeah. It's a funny motorcycle. I can't. It's not. It's of course not as fast as uh, as what I'm used to, and, and most likes like that. It doesn't have a quick shifter, but you can like decapitate, like decapitate or something that we call it with your throttle, and you just flick it up a switch, and it also works. You don't really need a quick shifter. You just need to be a little bit good with throttles. Now, when it comes to the suspension, uh, we have the Masosachi suspension or whatnot, um, uh, Italian, of course, and. This is a really soft suspension. No quirks, no gizmos like automatic suspension or adjustable. Uh, well, we have like, uh, we, we can twist it. It's like an adjustable suspension, but it's not like uh, automatically. You can like turn a little bit here and turn a little bit there. But uh, the first thing I always also want to do is of course speed bumps, high speed speed bumps to see if we actually get thrown off and end up in the hospital. So first speed bump, we're just gonna take like 80 kilometers an hour. Don't wanna go over the speed limit too much. There's like a lot of people walking here uh, today. So we're just gonna do like 800. This thing is soft, this, this thing is like really soft. Really soft suspension, I kinda like that. Yeah. 
this is like a really this is like a Cadillac this is like a really soft suspension so yeah what I was uh, gonna talk to you guys about the Chinese motorcycles this is my first of the fried rice like a, a fried rice playlist and I do want to try a lot more motorcycles when I bring this one back I'm gonna pick up the Riju or the Rihaku uh, adventure bike or something 500 cc uh, two gas tanks a thousand kilometer range so for next video it's going to be great as well uh, the things that those bikes need to have like this one for example it needs to be at least 500 cc's we're gonna skip the this part for the Royal Enfield it's gonna be 450 so actually let's just say it needs to be 450 cc's 450 cc's it needs to be like an adventure motorcycle also the price range I don't want to go over 10 grand not a lot of people have 10,000 euros to spare for a motorcycle these days so I'm gonna try it like What's up with this one? Like for example, like I said, this one is like 7,800. It's gonna be a lot cheaper, even a little bit cheaper when the uh, XK1200 comes out. They told me it's gonna be probably like 7,400. And that is, that is not a lot of money. And of course, you do not get a lot of gizmos. We do have a Bosch injection. We do have Bosch ABS. We have Brembo brakes. We have Mazzotsuchi suspension. The display is absolutely top-notch because all displays are made in China. And the engine is a funny fact. I've been doing a lot of research lately about uh, Chinese motorcycles and about Chinese brands and have been discovering like a lot of funky weird stuff like the Chinese own a lot. They're absolutely taking everything over. And I don't mind that if the price gets a lot better. So I don't mind. Now this engine in this motorcycle for example is actually built by a company called well, the, the, the Moro Marini is actually bought a couple years ago by Zhongyang Chinese company or something so a part of this bike is actually made ooh, a part of this bike is made in uh, China but then it is assembled and of course designed and and, 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 and whatnot in Italy so it's a, it's a partial combination over there but of course keep the prices down a lot of brands make motorcycles in China or even have parts built so I started looking like what the hell was Zhongyang and, and who are all these companies it turned out it turns out that the engine in this bike is actually a CF Moto motorcycle engine so built by CF Moto CF Moto also makes KTM engines yeah and CF Moto uh, recently uh, signed with Yamaha and is also going to build Yamaha engines like do take note uh, some of these things I'm saying today are coming from Wikipedia I have read them on other motorcycle journalists or whatnot so you have to sometimes take it with a little bit with a pinch of salt but I think most of them are pretty true because I actually found a picture of the Yamaha CEO boss they actually said like yeah we're gonna work with China but yeah the it will only be for the Chinese market like yeah sure thing boss everything is starting to turn like Chinese and also when I was uh, looking for other motorcycles I found out that there's a company called QJ Motorcycles, Crying Jang Motorcycles or something. And they're now building the, um, they were going to build the Lucky Explorer MV Agusta 5.5, but that got cancelled because the Italians wanted like purebred, purebred Italian made. So the 9.5 is fully made in Italy. As it turns out, the 5.5, they didn't want to make it in China, so it was cancelled. And the Harley Davidson, there's actually a Harley Davidson 500ccs that is being built in China. There's like a big group of Chinese companies buying every freaking company that is going broke in Europe and they start building things. I was like, wait, what the hell? So the Harley is there and then there's this engine and there's CF Moto and it's like, if you actually believe that you're riding on a purebred 100% European or American motorcycle, yeah, you need to chuck that brain in the, in the garbage. It's, it's gone, it's gone, it's not anymore. It's not anymore, everything is, everything is coming from China these days. So when you take all that together, oh, there's like a nice off-road here. Wait, 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 harder brakes, harder brakes. It's Brembo brakes, no worries, it's Brembo brakes. And this might get a little bit sketchier, but we'll see. Uh, seat height, uh, by the way, on this bike, 835 millimeters. And you can also lower it to 825 for the lowered seat. Oh, oh, wait, I have Scorpion Rally tires. I have Bob tires on this bike. Yeah, I don't really want to drop it, but I have Bob tires out. And you have seen the Tetris route last time, it is very muddy. The tires are of course bobs, but yeah, I'm just gonna take a small trail here. Pretty sure that the next game. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was already pretty fast. Pretty sure that the God dang it. Yeah, my bad. 
so first thing we do we turn off the ignition and i was already saying like this bike is 213 kilograms dry around the 230 mark uh, wet so yeah we're gonna we're gonna have to pick it up when now and when you have these cases it gets a lot easier to pick up this is still going to suck because um yeah i don't really i didn't really wear the right boots for this as well oh man this is i'm in a i'm in a pretty bad position here i'm not gonna lie Thank God this wasn't my 245 kilogram super face rover. Jesus, this is some soggy mud. This is this is like the worst mud ever. God dang it. Golly. Also a good solid tip, do not put your helmet behind mud when you try and take it out. That's a bad idea, as you can tell by my visor. Great, dry just started. Anyway, I'm having a blast. Not sure about you guys, but I'm having a blast. Yeah, thank God this is not going to be like that all day. Anyway, let's get cracking. We need to go to the shop. Mama didn't raise no quitter. Kill switch. Nice! Thank god I didn't have a heavy one. Also, did it also say like we have WSBs down there? Yeah. Probably not as important as it should be right now, but WSBs. Yeah, let's go. We need to get cracking. We need to get to the show. We need to get to the to the shop and to uh, get some black paint. Sometimes you just need a lot more speed and then everything goes a lot better. Oh, but this is like yeah, my tires are going all over the place. This is this feels like a freaking road tire I'm on right now. <laughs> but this is of course a, a tire. A tire question, nothing to do with a bike. I just want to have a little bit of a feel about like standing up and how does it feel. Well, standing up, it feels really comfortable. Like I said, the suspension is also very soft. Playing a little bit with the clutch here, getting a little bit of a feel of it. Oh, I'm sliding, really sliding from left to right. And I, I'm looking in the front over there and this is not looking good. I think it's best that I just turn around and go back. I gotta check it out first. Now I don't really have a lot of troubles with this. It's like very, very soaky. We'll soak up my tires. Don't really have a lot of problem with this or this. But I think there's like a giant log over there now. That is a bit of a problem. Yeah, we have a little bit of an issue. I can actually go through there all the way to the side. Might cause a little bit too much scratches. I would do it with 1290, but I don't want to damage like the beautiful red. I think it's a little bit too heavy for smoky to pull. Anyway, uh, worst case scenario, I would have gone around there, but we gotta we gotta rethink our situation right here. Yeah. Now the easiest way getting around this very small trail is not going to be that easy, but there's a little bit of a hill there, so we're just gonna ride it up, get back down and do something like that. Smoky special, yet again. Gotta love big adventure bikes. Something like this, ricochet it from this side, go back like that, do the same on this part, don't go too far. Just swerve your way like that. The wheel will start sliding. There we go. Back in business. Oh, let's do this. I think it's time for a road test. The good thing it's in off road mode though. Anyway, let's do the deeper ends. Whee! Oh, 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 Don't want to get stuck again here, Smokey. Especially not in the deep mud. Yeah, just take the deep trails. We'll be fine. <laughs> We're good to go. <laughs> ah, this feels a lot better. This feels a lot better, eh? So, like I was saying, we only have two modes. We have road and off-road. The off-road one has like, uh, the nubby tires. 
We have the phone connection, we have the uh, music connection because you can play a little bit with your phone. It's actually like a mirror of your phone itself. And like I said before, you could uh, in the previous version you could be uh, watching Netflix while riding a motorcycle. Kind of dangerous though, I guess. But now when it comes to the front screen, you can actually turn this to the side and then you pull up with one hand. But depending on the screws, how tight they are on the front, you can do it or you cannot do it. The screws are a little bit too tight. So anyway, I could still like take the screen up a lot higher. And when it comes to wind, yeah, we have to gonna we're gonna have to test it on the highway as well. But uh, riding just the uh, sub sub countries here in the forest countries in the farmer countries, it's good. It's good. Uh, heated grips, absolutely not. Heated seats, absolutely not. We are like through men here, like very basic. This bike is made for men who are very basic. This is a little bit too slow. Oh, what a rocket! What a rocket! <laughs> Oh, my screen, my, my visor is absolutely uh, covered in mud. So, uh, yeah, uh, when it comes to launch control, uh, absolutely not. But we'll have to launch it to, from 0 to 100. We're gonna do that. We're gonna, we're gonna launch it from 0 to 100. Yeah. So, you guys get a feeling of how fast this rocket actually is 60 horsepower, 55 newton meters. Oh, third gear release. I have to test that as well. <laughs> Here we go. Fourth round. Let's go. Yeah, 90. 100. Oh, it keeps on going. Oh, this thing is fast. Look at that. One, four, <laughs> fifth gear. Oh, this thing. Oh, yeah, the top speed. The top speed on this thing was actually 170 kilometers an hour. I was already close to that top speed. That's how fast this thing is. For having 60 horsepower, I mean, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. 60 kilometers an hour. I have to pass the car in fifth gear. Full throttle. Yeah. I also just used the no quick shift to quick shift, fourth gear, pow, fifth gear, sixth gear. Easy. Don't even feel it. You don't need a fancy quick shift. Now make no mistake, this motorcycle and this engine in here is not made to go like really incredibly fast. They would have taken a one cylinder or six hundred or five hundred or what like that. But this is also a parallel twin and it feels like uh, like a tractor. Like the Royal Enfield, it's also like the tractor feeling motorcycle. It's not fast, it's not it's not nimble, but it actually feels like it co could go on forever, like, you know, it just keep on going without breaking down. And like I said, this is a copy engine, a copied engine of a Kawasaki engine that has been going around for many, many years without having too many problems. So yeah, built by a company that also makes motorcycle engines for the bigger brands. I mean, yeah, with that being said uh, about the engine, yeah, pulling wheelies is yeah, I'm gonna try clutches in second gear. <laughs> let's, do, let's just do first gear like the Royal Enfield one. Oh, here we go! <laughs> we, popped, we popped a little bit of a wheelie. Ah, oh, you, you guys should have seen that from the outside. This was a, a little bit of a wheelie. But still, uh, a lot of people don't even like to pull wheelies. So now it just went on doing like half throttle and, and cruising down the road. I like it! I like it! I'm not gonna lie, for 7,400 euros, 7,800, like I said, it's going to be a little bit cheaper. Gotta be a bit careful, still got some mud on my tires, but this is already going in my top three for uh, for uh, fried rice, fried rice uh, motorcycle playlist. Yeah. When we get home with this uh, fresh Italian stallion, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna clean it up with the, with the new smoky bubbles, yeah. Smoky bubbles is in progress. And then uh, we're gonna see if I made some scars or not, but the handguard is still going strong. So that's one of the most important things. The mudguard is strong, and then we'll see if I actually made some scratches or not. Yeah. So really like this. Look at that foot, flat on the ground. Look at that one, flat on the ground. One meter, 76 centimeters, and both feet are flat on the ground. That is nice. And I don't even think that this is a lowered seat. So why didn't I check the opening first when it was open? Okay, so yeah, smoky special yet again. Can I go into a Starbucks looking this nasty because I have no BMW GS with me? I'm, am I allowed? Am I allowed to get that dirty into a Starbucks? Let's go with a little tractor. It also doesn't feel sluggish. It doesn't feel sluggish whatsoever. Fifth gear. Go into sixth gear. Oh, we gotta go back into the big screen. That's right. We have a big screen. There we go. 150. Oh, this is this is nice. This is, I'm doing like 145. You, you guys should really see. I, I should fix this. This is bad. But 
and feeling very comfortable. 6,000 RPMs doing 140. Yeah, this is nice. You see that? Not a lot of wind on my arms. No wind on my chest whatsoever. A little bit on the shoulders as usual. But this is nice. This is cruising very nice. I'm doing like 140. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm satisfied with this. I'm really satisfied with this. This is nice. Starbucks. Oh, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six people. Ooh, six people at Starbucks. That is a lot. Eh. Kind of nice though. I'm in the Netherlands again. It smells like weed here. Yeah, look at that front knobby. It's still that bad though. Don't really get why I actually went to the side that bad. Anyway. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm starting to get uh, pretty used to this motorcycle. <laughs> I also pretty much like it. Hello. Motorini style. It actually feels like, like riding a tractor. Th these motorcycles don't give me the need for speed. I know that sounds a little bit weird, but they're more like, I like to enjoy life. With my Super Duke 12 90 at Figer, and what the hell am I saying? I have too much copy. With my Super Adventure 1290 R, I would be like pulling really zero third gear between the trailers and rap and do crazy shit like that. And with this one, I'm just like, you know, calming, soothing. I'm in no rush. I did have some caffeine though, but let's go. Come on, full throttle. Woohoo! I feel like a little bit of vibration in my feet, not too much. Not really any vibration in my hands. Yeah, cruise control. We're like men here. We don't have that. We have like the basics. But it's cool. I could, I could do some traveling on this for sure. For sure. Like I said, 18 liter gas tank. It's like a 3.5 to 4 liters on 100 kilometers or something. All right, I really started to like this thing. <laughs> Now at a certain RPM, I do hear, you hear that? There's like, it sounds like exhaust protection, like a part of exhaust protection. I think it's a little bit loose, but like I said, the bike already has done like 11,500 kilometers. And that's also partly because why the, why the clutch is a little bit on the heavy side. I like to have like a very smooth clutch. I know I'm a little bit spoiled, like a very smooth clutch you can actually use with two fingers. You can do this one as well. You see that two fingers, it's no problem whatsoever. But if you want to take it all the way back, yeah, it needs a little bit more power and I don't really like that. But like I said, 11,000, a little bit of loop in, in that in that cable over here and it will be fine. Yeah, that little vibration I heard, that's the one. So it's some part over here, you hear that? Is the bot? This is the one. So this one needs some rubbers between the bolts, and then it'll be fine. Nice. The guards are absolutely fine. No scratches, no dents, nothing too crazy about that. No. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. So yeah, the Moto Marini 60 horsepower Scorpion Rally tires, Brembo brakes, Bosch ABS, Bosch injection, a very nice display. I'm gonna give this bike a 7.8. There's nothing to compare it yet, so in the middle of the board. But 7.8 on the smoky scale. And that's it for the Moto Marini Escape 650. But of course, I'm going to have to give my little buddy over here a nice little wash so I can bring it back next week to Moto Mondo. Thank you guys again, Moto Mondo, for giving Smokey this motorcycle. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Drive safe. See ya. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see my latest video, it is right over here. If you want to see my most favorite video, it is right over there. Subscribing is done over here. And if you want to become a full-time YouTuber, as you can see by my play buttons yourself, go to smokytube.com. And over there, I have the perfect all-in-one how-to YouTube course.